This is a stream deck, but I'm not a streamer. Today I want to share with you guys how I set up my all white stream deck as a content creator's dream. Let's talk about it. YouTube, what's good? It's your boy Will, back in the building with another video. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, what's good? If you enjoy content like this, maybe consider hitting subscribe. If you are a returning subscriber, what it do? What's good? Dap your boy up. I got a really dope video today. We're gonna be checking out the brand new all white Mark II version of the stream deck. Today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to set up a stream deck for productivity, such as social media quick buttons, smart home control with LifeX and Cololite LEDs, and Adobe Creative Cloud apps. The stream deck is offered in a six button version, a 15 button version, and a 32. I think the sweet spot is gonna be the 15 button, and also that's the only one that you can get in white right now. Just because you only have 15 buttons, you still have access to so much more. That we'll go over later. You can do things like add folders to go inside of a menu to go inside of another menu to go inside of another menu or you can even do pages where you can scroll over to another page this thing is really limitless as of right now elgato sells six custom plates that you can purchase separately to add to your stream deck to customize it and kind of make it yours so let's go ahead and get inside of this so we can actually play with the stream deck Let's go. First thing you get out of the box is your stream deck. This is the all white one as you see. You also get a white stand or a black stand depending on the version that you go with. You get a matching USB-C to USB-A cable and a quick start guide. The size of this stream deck is gonna be 3.3 inches by 4.6 inches by less than an inch. It also has, you know, the Elgato branding on it. I guess if you were building like a desk, you can kind of like integrate it inside of the desk. I do love just how small this is, if you just look at like the footprint. At the bottom of the stand, there is rubberized padding as well. So it's not gonna like slot off your desk or whatever. First thing you're gonna do is go to Elgato's website. Right side, you click on downloads. You're then gonna pick on select product. You're gonna scroll down to you see Stream Deck. That's what the software is called. And depending on your operating system, you're gonna choose Mac or Windows. Once you download and install the app, it will now pop in like so. Right here, this is like the basic information about your Stream Deck, Stream Deck name. And then right here, these are gonna be profiles. And profiles is basically like a brand new Stream Deck. Think of it like this right now. This is a profile that I have. And then this is another profile that I have and this is a new profile. These different profiles could be used for different programs. You click right here, this is the Stream Deck store. Really what's cool in here is gonna be the plugins. Plugins are basically pre-made uh, effects for apps. This is the Spotify plugin. Once you sit up here and install it like so, now when you come back to your Stream Deck, these are the plugins right here on the right side. So all of these plugins are from that Stream Deck library that I just showed you. And now what this does is it already has some predetermined effects. And it makes it so simple that all I gotta do is drag and drop. And let's say I do next track here, previous track here, I add a volume and a volume, right? What's really cool about this is as you just seen, all I did was just drag and drop everything onto this and it just popped up right here. And now to make it work, all I gotta do is just press this button, all right? So if you notice, all I did was press that one button, it immediately opened up my Spotify and it should be playing, but it's not. So I'm gonna hit it again. Now it's playing. Oh, let me turn it down before copyright. <laughs> really cool how you can even see the artwork you know, right here. The next track will go to the next track as you just seen right there, and I could go to the previous track. That just made life a little bit easier. It made it simple to configure because this is a plugin that Stream Deck has already had built into their interface. So another app here that I really like is gonna be the LifeX. So this will only work with LifeX smart lights. So I'm gonna grab this toggle LifeX power on and off. You know, you will have to like log in and configure this, but that's the easy part. You should know how to log in and all that. I'm not gonna show you. So right now I have my LifeX beam I'm gonna select and my desk strip. We're just gonna go ahead and tap it and 
I think you can tell. Yeah, you can kind of tell because my face got darker over here. And if I tap it again, it just comes right back on. We're going to go to another cool one that I love. It's going to be Colo Light. I'm going to select, uh, let's do Colo Light Mix. And all I got to do is just tap this. And as you've seen, the Colo Light Mix cut off. And then if I tap it again, it comes back on. So now we're going to go ahead and get into some more advanced stuff, all right? So if you notice, when I drag and drop these specific apps like Apple Music, LifeX, and Cololite, you can click right here, this drop down, and you can set from file. You can create an icon with Elgato's software, which is free, and you can also open up the Stream Deck icon library. So we're just going to select this real quick. Inside of here, these are all of the different icons that you can download, right? So real quick, if you go back here to the Stream Deck store, now if we go to icons. These are actually different icon packs. I have the Premiere Pro icon pack. That's how I was able to set all of my Premiere Pro shortcuts up. You still have DaVinci Resolve. You have After Effects. It's not like a lot in here, but they there are some useful icons that can help you. And now we go Open Stream Deck Library. That is where all of the icon packs that you download. So another one you definitely gonna need is gonna be this animated GIF one right here. I'm pretty sure you can download your own GIFs and program them, but unfortunately, I didn't go that deep into it. There is limited animated GIF pack right here. And we're just gonna go ahead and toss one on. I think it's pretty cool. So let's do that. So as you can see now, you got this moving guy. In order to actually get official app icons, you have to actually download it from the internet. So I'm gonna type in LifeX app logo. I'm gonna get this LifeX icon. So I'm just gonna go ahead and save it. And then I'm gonna select from file. And if I go to my downloads and I click on LifeX logo 2, now you can see the LifeX logo right here, which makes more sense. The only file types that this will accept is going to be JPEG and PNG files. So we're going to now do something a little bit more advanced. Now, I know you guys know you can create folders in here, but I'm going to show you useful ways to use it real quick. I'm just going to create a new folder. I am actually going to drag and drop all. Oh, nope. Drag that into the folder, this. Now right here, I can go, I'm gonna select from file and I already got the Spotify app logo here. So I'm just gonna find that real quick. So boom, now you can see the Spotify logo. And now when we click into that Spotify logo, now it brings up the Spotify preset buttons that we already set. And then inside the folder, you always have that back button to go revert back. So in system, these are predetermined plugin presets, again, that you can basically drag and drop. So we're going to do a website, right? I'm going to go to my YouTube channel. And right now would be a good time to tell you to subscribe to my channel. I'm going to go ahead and copy my URL for here. I'm going to paste this. We're going to select file and we're going to use this YouTube icon. Boom. And as you see, it's already right here, right? So now when I tap this icon, it goes to my YouTube channel. Like how dope is that, right? <laughs> now I know you probably like, oh wow, like, ooh. That just saved me time. So we're just gonna do a regular hotkey. If I select right here and I do a keystroke, I'm gonna do shift command three and that is a screenshot. If I hit that logo, it's gonna just take a screenshot as you can see right here at the bottom. This is the screenshot that I just took. This is one of my favorites. This is open. I can make this button open a app or a file. Very self-explanatory. We're gonna go to choose. And I forgot, you have to actually click the icon of the app. And as you see with this, it brought in the logo with this application, which is good. But it doesn't do it all the time. So just keep that in mind. Now when I hit the Lightroom classic button, Lightroom should open up any day now. Again, this is all about productivity here. That's what we're trying to create. We're trying to create faster processes to do things so we could get more things done. I feel like I explained to you guys a lot about 
how to kind of use this interface. So now I'm gonna go ahead and switch to my profile so I can show you all the cool stuff that I did. This is my default profile right here. These are pages, right? Each profile can do up to 10 different pages. This is my Premiere Pro button. So if I select on Premiere Pro, now it goes into another folder. The first page is like the basic editing stuff. This is for all the stuff that I need to do like once I first start the session. And then the next page is more for like fine tune editing. With just the press of that one button, Premiere Pro is now opening. Once I open up Premiere Pro, I like to hit this button. This is gonna be my epidemic sound page. This is the website that I use for all the music, including the one that you're listening to right now. So then I will go ahead and I will click import. And this is now me importing clips. So once I've selected clips I need, I import them, now I got save, right? That takes way less time than um, obviously doing it manual. Another cool thing I wanna show you guys is this. So I went ahead here and set up these labels. And basically what a label is, is these different colors on my timeline of clips. I made these custom because I wanted to do the color labels that I'm showing you now. Normally, again, these are not here, but I program them by simply dragging and dropping them. So yeah, it's very self-explanatory, you just drag and drop, right? So now what I do is make F12, which is gonna be red, this custom key. So we're gonna go here to here and now here. And then now you see I have F12 to be the shortcut for the color red, which also is associated with this. You can do pretty much anything that you desire with this. So again, this just makes life easier. All I gotta do is select the clip, and then if I hit red, now it just changes red, blue, whatever color I want. What I can tell you is, this is a game changer for me and my setup when it comes to video editing. I'm on TikTok, I got Instagram, uh, my YouTube. So if I just go click on this button, this brings up my YouTube Creator Studio dashboard right here. This is gonna bring up my comment section. How I showed you guys earlier how you can add this little text plugin. Um, I basically just made some predetermined uh, comments that I typically reply to. So I got TAB, and if I uh, tap that, you can see it says, thanks a lot, bro. If I hit MTC, it says more to come. Thanks for your support. This is my YouTube sub count. I just basically triggered this button. So it just pulls up my sub count. This is my mail one. So if I click on this, it opens up another window. This is my Gmail mail. And this is my Yahoo mail. What's also cool is it opens up in the same exact size. So if I make it like this and then I hit close and now I hit my downloads again, it opens right back up from memory. Now, I don't know if that's a Stream Deck thing or if that's Apple, but either way, it's pretty cool. They do have If Then Then That. If you never heard of If Then Then That, you gotta check them out. But I'm gonna be honest with you guys. So I tried to set this up to show off in this video and I just didn't get it. They need to make this way more simpler. Everybody thinks of a Stream Deck and you just think of streaming. So I hope that this video was helpful. <laughs> I know I really have been enjoying the Stream Deck. Having this around on my desk at my fingertips to speed up my productivity, to do things like YouTube comments and open up Premiere Pro, go directly to any of my social media sites. And I mean, come on, bro. It just looks cool on a desk. Like, can we all just admit it? It was a lot of information in this video. I really hope that you guys enjoy and got some value out of the content today. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hook you guys up with all of the icons that I found on the internet that you see on my stream deck. It took me so long to find all of this and do all that. And I'm just trying to be helpful to help you guys out, to help speed up the process, because that's what we want, right? You watching this video because you want to be more productive or you try to find solutions to make life easier for you. I'm just always looking for the most efficient way to do things. And so far, the Stream Deck has done me justice. With all that being said, guys, I will leave links down in the description to pick up an all-white Stream Deck or a black one or any of the faces. With all that being said, guys, thank you so much for checking out this video. I really hope that you guys got some value out of the content today. If you did, please don't forget to leave your boy a big thumbs up. If you hung out this long and you made it to the end of the video, you gotta go ahead and hit subscribe. Holla at your boy. But thank you so much for watching. I'm going to holla at y'all next week in my next video. Deuces.